we've been talking about tax reform a long, long time. And most people didn't think we'd ever see this day. We'd actually, Congress would start action on replacing this horrible code that Tom Friedman knows we can't compete with around the world and replace it with a much more pro-growth, simpler code. So, look, just the fact we're starting this here in just a few hours, it tells you how serious we are about this. Yeah, but I liked it a lot more before I saw the details on the personal side of things, Mr. Chairman. Well, tell me about that. <laughs> I, I, I agree with much of what you've done when it comes to the business side of things. When it comes to personal, there's a lot of deductions that are going to go away uh -oh. and some this that are going to stick around that, yeah. that, this is that about bother me. No, 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 it's not about that. If you everybody's look at metal deductions, be hurt. everybody's no, got to be hurt. And, and, and that's fine. So everybody should be hurt. But why did we keep, why did we keep the whole issue of, uh, of carried interest? Why did that oh, stay in? Okay. So we, we will make changes that, in fact, in the original base bill should have been a longer holding period for carried interest. That makes sure you don't have the giant hedge fund and sort of spinning in and out of that. And it really sort of puts it back to its original tent, which is to reward over long-term holdings, those who, who put in skin in the game and then work to make the skin of the game better, that that is, in fact, a gain. That's the approach we're taking. I, I'm sorry, I'm confused by that. It may change, did you say? Yes, in the uh, um, uh, chairman's amendment today, uh, we will put in the two-year holding period okay. uh, on carried interest to make sure it really is focused on those long-term traditional real estate partnerships. They build the strip centers or the uh, industrial right. parks, uh, also, the venture capitalists that are long-term as well. It would so. also capture all the private equity firms? So, it, so those will continue as long as they're holding these for longer periods, we'll be allowed to continue to use it, yes. What? That's good to hear. Yeah, let's let's talk about some of the other things as as the process goes on, and I you know I know it's it's like sausage we, you hear that a lot. But what what are you ready to go absolutely go to the mat for? I guess you're uh, the twenty percent you're willing to go. What what about the state and local and and getting rid of that? Is that so, absolutely going to survive? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm going for, we want a dramatically more pro growth tax code where our one our companies, whether they're local or global, can compete and win anywhere in the world, including here at home. We want a dramatically flatter and fairer tax code. And so eliminating those dozens of deductions and exclusions and lobbyist loopholes is about flattening the tax code, making it understandable and fair. And yeah, we are challenging the status quo here. We are taking out a lot of these provisions because we really dream of the day. And the reason we talk about this postcard style approach is that can you imagine the tax code where every one of us knows what each other's deductions are because we use exactly the same one. So yes, we are proposing to, to keep mortgage interest, charitable deductions and the property tax deductions up to $10,000, but we are eliminating the uh, income tax deduction and using those taxes to reduce uh, uh, taxes on, on all Americans. Right. And so it is, a, it is a change from this horrible code we have today. Chairman Brady, can I ask, um, I, I support tax reform, uh, but I would have liked to see revenue neutral tax reform. The fact that we're raising the prospect of a $1.5 trillion addition to the, the national debt over the next decade. At a time, you know, in 2008, your caucus did not support any kind of deficit spending uh, to bail us out. Now we're at the time when our economy is incredibly hot. We're taking on probably more debt, possibly throwing out our spare tire and our bumper in the event that some event happens that we're going to need it. How do you justify that, that switch? Well, what I do know is while our economy has improved recently, economists still predict, you know, 2 percent, in some cases, <coughs> sub 2 percent growth for the next decade. I think uh, the way you keep, if you want to keep really high deficits and more debt, just keep the economy the way it is. Just stick with the status quo. I guarantee you we'll pile, pile on more debt. We're taking a different approach. One, we know tax reform done right can grow the economy in a big way. But that alone won't get us back to just what you said, getting us back to a balanced budget. You, you have to eliminate dozens, if not hundreds, of provisions out of the code to lower those rates to move us back to a balanced budget. So growth alone, I acknowledge, won't get us back there. Eliminating a lot of these so we can lower the rates and move forward, you have to do both. Chairman, um, if, if the goal is to grow the economy, if the goal is to create jobs, and the goal is not to add uh, debt to the extent that you can, you can avoid it, um, how do you think about the estate tax, which is worth several hundred billion dollars um, over the next 10 years? Um, and how, how do you justify the, the pass-through uh, approach, 
which also is going to really uh, be helping people at the top end, uh, not, not the lowest end. Yeah, and I respectfully disagree on both. Look, the estate tax isn't paid by the super wealthy. That is Pat Snook. Uh, who's a farmer in Livingston, Texas, who she is now on her third death tax loan from the bank just to keep her own family farm. I think of our local businesses, that's who it hits, who work 40 years. So this is double and triple taxation. It's the number one reason our family-owned businesses aren't passed down to their kids. And eliminating it creates 140,000 new jobs here in America. So I think it's the worst tax provision in the code. It is time for it to go. And on the, on the small businesses, in the past, as you know, um, small businesses were left behind. All the rate cuts were on the corporate side. But we know since the Reagan's reform, Reagan reforms, most of our businesses are classified as pass-through, so we're not leaving them behind. And uh, from the half trillion dollars of tax relief we provide Main Street businesses, it goes to Main Street businesses, which is where we're focused. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.